Bank Negara's Monetary Policy Committee has decided to maintain the overnight policy rate at 3%. BNM said at the current OPR, the stance of Malaysia's monetary policy remains accommodative and supportive of economic activity. The committee will also continue to assess the balance of risk to domestic growth and inflation to ensure that the policy stance remains conducive to sustainable growth amid price stability. In a statement, the central bank said the stronger economic growth performance in the second quarter was underpinned by the resilience of private spending amid broad base expansion in key economic sectors. Going forward, BNM expects these domestic drivers, alongside stable labour market and wage growth, to remain supportive of economic activity. As such, the central bank is sticking to its baseline growth projection for 2019 of between 4.3 and 4.8%. However, BNM warns that its projection is subject to further downside risk from worsening trade tensions, uncertainties both globally and domestically, and extended weakness in commodity-related sectors. In a note, MIDF said that it expects OPR to stay at 3% for the rest of the year as long as major macroeconomic indicators such as GDP growth remain stable and above 4%. Astro Malaysia Holdings saw a 921% leap in net profit for the second quarter of FY20 from 16.6 million to 169.3 million ringgit due to cost discipline measures and lower finance costs. Top line, however, declined by 12.7% to 1.2 billion due to a decrease in subscription revenue and licensing income. As for the first half of FY20, net profit improved by 80.6% to 345.5 million, while revenue dropped. 9.4% to 2.47 billion from 2.73 billion ringgit previously. Going forward, CEO Henry Tan said that Astro is putting in place building blocks for new revenue adjacencies such as its bundles with Maxis and partnerships with HBO Asia with more such partnerships to come. Meanwhile, research house CGSCIMB said that it doesn't expect Apple's upcoming TV video streaming service to compete with Astro's offerings. Instead, the research house says Apple TV Plus will will likely face more competition from pirated streaming sites. Apple TV is expected to be launched on November 1st worldwide and will charge 19 ringgit 90 per month. Media Partners Asia reported that only 1.5% of Malaysians directly subscribed to streaming services in 2018, mainly Netflix, with many openly admitting to streaming content illegally. The Malaysian Aviation Commission has come out to refute allegations made by Air Asia Group Chief Tan Sri Tony Fernandez that the commission has failed the aviation sector. In a statement, Chairman Dr Nungsari Radi highlighted several examples of initiatives MAFCOM has undertaken since its establishment in March 2016, one of which is the Malaysian Aviation Consumer Protection Code 2016, which ensures that customers would only pay for the services they opted for, adding that MAFCOM had eliminated hidden charges such as the KLIA2 fee. Nungsari also pointed out that it has issued over 93% of air traffic rights of which Air Asia has been a major beneficiary with over 50% of all ATRs awarded to them. He ended his statement by saying that there are many stakeholders in the aviation industry in Malaysia, not merely one, and MAFCOM's role is to ensure its work benefits the industry overall. To recap, in a post published on September 9th via his LinkedIn, Fernandez had laid bare in a seven-point listicle his grievances with the commission, which included the introduction of bureaucratic policies, among others. Mestec Minister Yo Biyin has called out Indonesian Environment and Forestry Minister Dr. Siti Norbaya by saying that she should not be in denial that Indonesia is responsible for the current haze cloaking Malaysia. In a statement posted to Facebook, Yo said the data from ASEAN Specialized Meteorological Center clearly shows that Indonesia is responsible, Banama reports. Yo included a link to the ASMC where the latest data shows a large number of hotspots in Indonesia's Kalimantan at 400 and Sumatra at 387, compared with only seven hotspots in Malaysia. The minister was responding to a statement issued by Siti Norbaya saying that the haze is actually from Sarawak, Peninsula Malaysia and maybe parts of West Kalimantan. 
Communications and Multimedia Minister Gobin Singh Deo gave several policy updates today, including that the government is looking to implement a policy on data and artificial intelligence. He said his ministry would be looking at presenting a national data and AI policy paper to the cabinet sometime in the future. On the Media Council, Gobin said he is currently preparing a paper on the council to the cabinet, adding that he expects it to be ready soon and he will make more announcements in due course. As for whether a potential postage hike is in the offing. Gobin said that once his ministry gets the report on the situation, he will hold a press conference. The last time postage rates were raised was in 2010.